Genesis chapter number 19. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, arose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Let me just stop right here and chase a rabbit. Most of you know what Sodom and Gomorrah was all about. And here these two angels have been sent to Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot sees them, recognizes who they are, and he's bidding them to come into his house, to spend the night in his house. And these two angels said, no, we'll abide in the street. Now, let me put that in context for you. These angels who have been dispatched from the abode of God, who know the holiness of God, would rather dwell in the streets of wickedness than in the house of a hypocrite. You're welcome. That didn't cost you nothing. That's a whole other message right there. But Miss Annette told me I've got to be nice today. Let's continue reading verse 3. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and they did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. And, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, which have not known a man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and uh, he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, talking about the angels, and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides... Son-in-law, thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because of the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now look at verse 24. And the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife, Lot's wife, looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We do thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the good singings, Lord. Our hearts have been blessed. We thank you, Lord, for the good meal that we'll have after service, and all the hands that prepared it. We thank you for all the labor that's been done around the house of God this week. Lord, uh, we come in, the, the house of God's always clean. We come in, the lawn's always meticulous, and the flowers are always pretty. Lord, uh, folks labor and do things in the shadows that many never see, but God, you see it all. We're thankful for those who sacrifice and serve around the house of God. Now, God, we thank you that we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth. 
And God, we're thankful for this grand privilege. Now, Lord, this week in our country celebrates those that fought for our country. Many gave the ultimate sacrifice and gave their lives for our freedom. Lord, help us not to take for granted the privileges of Christ and help us not to take for granted the privileges of our country. And Father, I pray for those in our nation, especially our leaders who have forgotten what has been paid for us to have these liberties. I pray you'd smoke them with conviction to remember the men and women that gave their lives for our freedom. Now, Father, I thank you for our veterans. We had a couple stand today, and we know Brother Charlie's working, and he would stand. We thank you for those of our church family that pray for those that serve our country. And God, we're certainly thankful for our church family as a whole. I pray for those that are traveling. You'd be with them. I pray for those that are sick. You'd touch them. But, Lord, for the next few minutes, help us. We need your help. We need your touch. And God, I certainly pray that you would engrave in our hearts and our minds the privilege it is to be saved. God, I pray if there's any amongst us today unsaved, lost without God, today would be the day you remove the blinders off their eyes. Today would be the day they would get uncomfortable in their sin. Today would be the day they'd give their heart and life to Jesus. I pray for your children that are here. Some may be hurting. I pray for a balm of Gilead. I pray for deliverance. I pray for help. I pray for encouragement. Now use this unworthy vessel. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the message you put on my heart. God put a watch card about my lips. Help me not say anything. Be contrary to the word or will of God. The Lord help me say everything that be pleasing unto thee. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. We'll get to the thought in a minute. I want you to notice the delegates that are dispatched. In verse number 1, we find, And there came two angels to Sodom at even. Can I say that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would fall on men, that he would leave men. The Old Testament, they did not, every household did not have a copy of the Word of God. The Old Testament, when things got real serious, God would send angels to do his work. Can I say he still has angels watching over our lives? And he even said in the word of God that sometimes we entertain angels unawares. But can I say that today he's given us the perfect word of God. He's given us the Holy Spirit to indwell us. Uh, and today he works through and by instruments of flesh uh, to accomplish his will. But make no mistake, God still is in control. And God still has a work to do. We see he sent two angels. We see the delegates dispatched. Now notice, if you will, the devilish desires. Look at verse number five. Talk about the men of the city. They came from all quarters of, uh, of the city, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Those last three words, may know them, is in the biblical sense of knowing them, in the marital sense of knowing them. They wanted to abuse these men. Mm, that's as clean as I can keep it. Verse number 6, And Lot went at the, out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. They say, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. They had devilish desires. Now imagine both young and old from every quarter of the city comes to know these two men. Hmm? It's what done in a corner. It's what done in a back room. This was an open, accepted lifestyle in these cities. We see the delegates dispatched. We see the devilish desires. Now notice the destruction delivered. Verse 24 and verse 25. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities, all the plain, the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. God burned it all up. Hmm? Now, let me talk about Sodom for a minute. We'll get to the message. Can I say Sodom had an abomination problem? The Bible speaks much of sin. It speaks much of iniquity. Sin is transgression of the law of God. Iniquity is unequal dealing with God. Unfortunately, in our day and age, many preachers don't preach on sin. 
They don't preach on iniquity. I had a lady approach me Thursday at a funeral. This lady knows I'm a preacher. This lady's been in a Baptist church for over 70 years. She asked me if I preach on hell. I said, yes, ma'am. So I don't every Sunday, but I do preach on hell. Mm, I didn't tell her that I preached on her Mother's Day. It probably gave her a stroke. But anyway, this is what she said, Brother Tommy. She said, I was thinking the other day, I cannot remember a time when I've heard a message on hell. Wow. Goes to the Baptist church every Sunday. Wow. Mm. Can I say we're living in a day and age where preachers are tickling ears right. instead of preaching the Word of God. You preach the Word of God, I don't care. You start Genesis, end up Revelation, bump anywhere in between. Uh, you're going to find that man is sinful. Uh, man is wicked. Uh, God is holy. Uh, God is just. Uh, and God made a way for sinful man uh, to be forgiven of his sins. Uh, but if man does not repent, uh, man's going to spend eternity in hell. Uh, Sodom had an abomination problem. There's sin, there's iniquity, and then there's abomination. Abomination is a whole lot worse than sin and iniquity. Let me give you the definition of abomination. Abomination is an object of a abhorrence. A God abhors those caught up in certain sin. And you say, what does that word abhor mean? It means he's des he despises it. That it's detesting to God. That it loathes God. And that he hates it. God said in the book of Proverbs, there are seven things that God doth hate that are an abomination to him. Can I say the Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. You're here today and in your sins, God is not only not pleased with you, He is angry at you. Now, I don't want to make anybody angry at me, but there's one person I for certain don't want angry with me. That's Almighty God. Because in His hand is my very breath. God can snuff me out right now. I don't want to make God angry at me, but it's one thing for Him to be angry at you. It's another thing for Him to hate you. And when you're caught up in an abomination... God has hatred towards you. Yep. And can I say, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? God got sick of them. He hated what they were going through, what they were dealing in, and their lifestyles, and he saw that he could not recover them. Wow. They had an abomination problem. Can I say something else about Sodom? They had an authority problem. Yep. They didn't recognize God as God. Right. They didn't care about God. Much like it said in Judges 17, 6, in those days uh, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. They had an authority problem. Their authority was themselves. Now, I've got news for you. You can rule your own life, but you can't deliver it. They had an abomination problem and an authority problem, but they had an accountability problem. Mm, they was about ready to face the judgment of God. And I'd like to say the worst thing that happened to Sodom and Gomorrah is verse 24 and verse 25. No, that just destroyed them off the face of the earth. Then they had to face Almighty God. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. The Bible says that our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Let me back it up a little bit. America has an abomination problem. There are things going on in the streets of America. There are things going on in the TVs of America. There are things going on uh, 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 in the school systems of America. My dear friends, that God absolutely hates. America has an abomination problem. Can I say this? America has an authority problem. This country was founded on the principles and oracles of Almighty God. But this country now says uh, that God doesn't exist. And all of our secular institutions, they teach evolution. Mm -mm. They don't teach about Almighty God anymore. we got an authority problem. Matter of fact, they think that uh, 
uh, those in charge know more about life than you do, so you just got to listen to what they say and do it. No, we got to listen to what God says and do that. America has an abomination problem, an authority problem, because America does what's right in their own eyes. Uh, how come, it, listen, try to be nice, but how come Martha Stewart lied under oath and went to jail, but they've now proven that Hillary has lied 37 times, not one time, and she's still walking free? That's all they know. That's all they can prove. Mm. because the elites think they are better than us and they live above the law. But it's not only in government. In our neighborhoods, there are people who think they, they don't have to obey the law. They can do whatever they want to and get away with it. Mm. Listen, uh, we've got able-bodied people in America who's collecting money from the government, refuse to work because they're lazy. And every single business in Florence, Kentucky has help wanted signs. Shame on you if you give anybody sitting on the side of the road with a sign holding up, and shame on you if you give them any money. Uh, as much effort as it takes to sit out there and beg for money, they can go work a job, make some money, and get some benefits. They don't want a job. They want your money so they can get the next high. Mm, you're welcome. I didn't cost you anything. Uh, America's absolutely lost its mind. There's a baby formula shortage in America, but there's stockpiles of it on the border for illegal aliens. Mm, not immigrants. Immigrants come legally. They're illegals. We got a government that's funding illegals. They can apply for benefits, not even be citizens, uh, and you and I, the middle class, is paying for it all. Mm. It's been proven a lot of these illegals are thugs. They're parts of cartels. They're bringing fentanyl in and all kinds of illicit drugs that are destroying our youth and our streets. Uh, but the elite says, come, come on in, come on in. We'll take care of you in America. But they don't take care of Americans. We got veterans that are homeless, that fought for our country. And we got benefits we're given to illegals. Don't get me started. America's got an abomination problem. America's got an authority problem. America's got an accountability problem. America's under the judgment of God. Our streets aren't burned up from Almighty God, but they're burned up. Every institution that used to be the uh, the standard for the world to look to is now debased and the world is going on without it. You know why we ought to want to win the Caribbean? Because we have the freedoms to go down there into the schools, into the ghettos, and go down there and win the Caribbean. And maybe the Caribbean could be the standard for how people get to God. We've prayed too long for America. We sit in churches in America and don't do business with God. Why would we expect sinners to? Mm. I'm here to tell you, just because you was born in America doesn't give you a free pass to heaven. I firmly believe people that die and go to hell from America will suffer more in, in hell than folks that die from countries that didn't have what we have. America has an accountability problem. So this is what I'm going to preach on for just a few minutes this morning. Let's get your appetite all ready for the dinner we've got prepared. I'm going to preach on why America will apologize to Sodom. Why America will apologize to Sodom. For years, Sodom and Gomorrah has been the hallmark of the judgment of God. Everybody knows about Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot's wife being turned to a pillar of salt. Can I say... There's coming a day when America will apologize to Sodom. Hmm? Yeah. Jesus told Tyre and Sidon, if, if the wor or Capernaum, if the works had been done in Tyre and Sidon that were done in you, the whole cities would have been won. Yeah. Capernaum's going to have to apologize to Tyre and Sidon. And I'm here to tell you, America's going to apologize to Sodom. You say, preacher, how can you say that? Well, can I say, first of all, 
America will apologize to Sodom because Sodom had no godly witness. Look at verse number 1 again. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. I don't have time to get into a whole lot about Lot, but Lot was the nephew of Abraham. Lot was raised right. Lot believed right. Lot sacrificed unto God. The only reason Lot's in Sodom is Lot, who was wealthy, and Abraham, who's wealthy, their herdmen couldn't get along. And they all wanted the best for their flocks. So Abraham said, Lot, you choose what direction you want to go. I'll go the other direction. Lot got to looking around. He looked over them well-watered plains, uh, saw those two cities. He said, that looks like a great place to raise a family. Uh, and he headed that way. Uh, and instead of Lot impacting Sodom, Sodom impacted Lot. You hear me and hear me well. Young people, where you at? Don't get caught up in some little pretty thing that don't love God. Fellas, she'll take you away from God. You won't bring her to God. Ladies, don't be looking at some strapping, handsome dude and saying, boy, that's the one I want, but he doesn't love God. He'll take you away from God uh, instead of you bringing him to God. Uh, there's a lot of folks in church with a broken heart because uh, their spouse don't come to church with them because uh, they chose looks. Uh, they chose popularity. Uh, they chose uh, the outward appearance uh, but didn't look uh, and see if they had a heart for God. Uh, don't sell out your spirituality. Uh, uh, stick with somebody who loves God. Uh, Lot went down there and Sodom impacted him and his family. I don't have a whole lot of time to get into this. i got to get this message done. But when, so when Lot went to leave, his own family laughed at him. They didn't believe in God. Can I say Lot was influential? He sat at the gate. That was one of the most prominent positions you could have in a city. He's what we would look to as the judge of the city. All business transactions, all legal transactions were done at the gate. And he's the one sitting there presiding over it all. He was influential in all their judgment, in all their business, but not towards God. Can I say this? He lived in indulgence. He had a great lifestyle. He had many uh, uh, flocks before he went down there, and then he had a prominent position. Uh, he was a highfalutin dude. But he's bankrupt spiritually. Mm. He was no godly witness to them people. He was indignant. He allowed them to strip him of what he had for God. 2 Peter 2 tells us, verse 7, And deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Amen. He allowed them to take everything that God had put in him. And my dear friends, you say, why do you come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? I'll tell you why. So we can get filled back up with what the world is stripping from us when we're out in the world. Lot was not incorrupt. He became corrupted in that mess. What man offers his two virgin daughters to a mob that would have their way with them? Not a godly man. They'd have took my life before I gave my daughters to them. Are you listening? Hmm? He was no godly witness. But can I say America's known nothing but a godly witness. The settlers that came from, from England came here for one purpose. They put their lives in peril crossing in boats across the, uh, the great ocean to get here. For one hope, that they might have a sovereign land where they could worship God. Yep. The Church of England did not give them that liberty. They came here seeking God. 
Do you ever wonder why America prospers and Mexico didn't? You know, it's basically the same continent, the same uh, uh, resources. Why did not Mexico prosper and America did? Because they came to America looking for God. They went to Mexico looking for gold. If you seek God, you'll find all the gold you'll ever need. And gold in the Bible is always a picture of righteousness. Hmm. But can I say, America's known nothing but a godly witness. And America's in the same shape Sodom was. America's going to apologize to Sodom. Sodom had no godly witness. Can I say this secondly? Sodom had no holy word. Hmm. They had no access to the prophecies of Almighty God. They had no access, access to the promises of God. They had no ex access to the precepts of God, the rules to live by. They had no access to the punishments of God. But we do. We have all 66 books, all 1,100 plus chapters and 773,000 words. Our very constitution was framed by the Word of God. Do you know that? It sure was. And yet, America is just as corrupt as Sodom was. America is going to apologize to Sodom. Sodom had no godly witness, had no holy word. We have it. Matter of fact, most of us have many copies of it. And unfortunately, we don't crack the covers enough. How do we expect sinners to? Can I say this? Sodom had no divine worship. They had no witness, no word, and no divine worship. Hmm. I'm talking about worship that's scriptural. Jesus said, they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. When you have no truth, you can't worship scripturally. Hmm. Can I say there's a lot of so-called worship today in America, but it's not based on the scriptures. It's false worship. And the Bible said in the last days, many would come in His name. The Bible said in the last days, there'd be many false Christ, false prophets. There's false doctrine. But they had no worship that was scriptural. We did. A great French statement back in the turn of the 20th century came to America he viewed everything about America. His name was Alexis de Tocqueville. Alexis de Tocqueville went back to France and he made the statement. He said, America is not great because of their matchless constitution. America is not great because of their great industry. America is not great because of their brilliant minds or because of their great army. He said, America is great because America is good. He said, not until I went into the churches and heard preaching of the flaming righteousness from pulpits. He said, I realize America's good because America's godly. He says, when America ceases being good, America ceases being great. And that's where we are, friend. They had no worship. Not worship that was scriptural, not worship that was spiritual. Not worship that was sterling or authentic, real. In Florence, I don't know how many churches are here. I've lost count. There's not many that are authentic. Amen. There's somewhere they've got to have police officers to direct traffic. But what they have isn't authentic. Matter of fact, I think today they were uh, speaking on, uh, uh, what was it, the things Jesus lied about? Yeah, things Jesus made up. Well, let me have something. Jesus made everything. Huh? But he didn't make up or they're implying he lied about things. Hmm? That place would be packed today. They're packed because they get free coffee and donuts. Hmm? It was a real blessing going to Seth's graduation. I had to go into one of them places. Huh? Nothing but devils all around. And Seth. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> it 
It amazed me that I guess what you'd call the entryway or the vestibule was larger than the sanctuary so you could have access to all the sodas and all the coffee and all the junk. Here's the bottom line. If somebody can get you today with a cup of coffee, somebody will get you next week with a buffet. But if you want Jesus, you're going to have to look hard and hard and far to find somebody that's authentic today that preaches this book uncompromising, <laughs> preaches the whole counsel of the Word of God. They had no authentic sterling worship. America's had some of the greatest evangelists and greatest preachers the world's ever known. America's printed more Bibles than any other country in the world. America's sent more missionaries than any other country in the world. America's planted more churches than any other country in the world. But America's become corrupt. America also prints more pornography than any other country in the world. America consumes more booze, and that's saying something with Germany, than any other country in the world. America has become corrupted. America is going to apologize to Sodom. And I thought about this lastly. Sodom had no historical writ. Their history had no godly foundation. As much as our government tries to deny our godly heritage, you cannot go to any historic city in America without finding testimonies of God working in the birth of America. If you was to go to Congress today, where they have the State of the Union address, where Congress does their business, all around the rotunda, you'll find silhouettes of great minds and men of esteem and men that were given to laws and in all of them, you see the profile, but one. There's one that you see the whole face. And that one sits directly across from the podium where the vice president always sits and where the president will stand when he addresses the nation and the State of the Union. That one with the whole face represents Moses. The old Senate floor, the two doors to walk into, has the Ten Commandments on the doors. Hmm? Can I say, throughout our history, men like George Washington made statements that America was a Christian nation. Not a nation of religion, a Christian nation. You'll find throughout America, men like Benjamin Franklin, who certainly didn't live a godly wife, but he said that, Hey, if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without God knowing it, how can a nation raise without God's blessings on it? And throughout our history, there's an inclusion of Almighty God. Benjamin Franklin also went on to say that in our school systems, he said the Word of God ought to be taught at least the Ten Commandments. Mm. Mm. Sodom had no godly foundation America has Sodom had no fundamental teaching America has mm. it amazes me how Hollywood denies God but every so often you'll see all kinds of inferences to him there'll be commercials with Noah's Ark in it mm. You can't see a funeral on anything in Hollywood where they're not playing Amazing Grace. Mm. But there's been fundamental teachings about God in America. Can I say there's been no lawful force guaranteeing their right to worship God in Sodom? Can I say the First Amendment of the Constitution gives us the right to do what we're doing today? Whether or not you know this, there was a fellow by the name of Leland, John Leland, who wanted to be the first governor of Virginia. At that time, it was illegal to be a Baptist in Virginia. 
But there was a preacher. I got that backwards. The preacher's name was John Leland. The fellow who wanted to be the governor was James Madison. And Leland, just a preacher, was preaching the word of God. That time, Brother James, even though it was illegal to be a Baptist, they say four out of five people in Virginia were Baptists. And they was going to make Leland the first governor of Virginia. Leland, being a preacher, said, I don't, I'm not a governor, I'm a preacher. James Madison came to him. And Leland told Madison, he said, if you'll guarantee the freedom of Baptist to worship God in America or in, in Virginia, I'll throw all my support to you. Not only did he secure it for Virginia, he also secured it for the Constitution of the United States. Madison went on to become president of the United States. But it was Madison that, ha that helped uh, Jefferson write the Constitution. I'm trying to help you with something. Not only has America had a godly influence, it was the Baptist faith that influenced America to be a godly nation. But look where she's become. If you're a, if you're a Bible believer, if you're a fundamental Baptist in America, you're the butt of many jokes. We've had people run for the presidency that called us names Obama and Hillary that's good I don't want to line up with that crowd bunch of thieves huh? they look at us in disdain the only thing saving America today is churches like this if it wasn't for churches like this still doing a work for God what you read in verse 24 and verse 25 would come. America's killed that we know some 62 million babies from the womb. Right now, the Supreme Court's about ready to overturn that. Hallelujah, what a blessing. But can you imagine? The left is so insane, they are now pushing that after a baby's born, you can murder it. They don't even hide it anymore. The other night I was watching uh, something on TV and it seemed like every other commercial was about the abortion pill. They don't call it that, they call it plan B. But let me give you a good plan. Don't have sex outside of marriage. You don't have to worry about getting pregnant if you don't want a baby. Uh, but can I help you with something? There's enough stuff in America you don't have to have a baby if you don't want to. But once you have one, you need to have it. If not, it's murder. America's murdered babies thinking they're getting away with it. No, we're not. America's adopted the same wickedness that Sodom and Gomorrah had and act like it's okay. America's gotten so crazy, we just put a Supreme Court justice on, on that doesn't know what a woman is. Now, I'm not the brightest light bulb in, 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 the, in the bunch, but I know the difference. Uh, uh. And listen, if you got an Adam's apple, you're a dude. It's not real tough. Uh. But America's lost its mind. And the only thing keeping verse 24 and 25 from happening is churches like ours. And the Holy Ghost of God still working in people's lives like yours. But America is going to apologize to Sodom. I said all that say this. The Bible says where much is given, much is required. Now it's easy for us to stand and beat our chest and talk about how wicked things are in America. What are we doing about it? We have the truth. Can I say there are people in Florence, Kentucky living terrible lifestyles, but they've never heard the truth. What are we doing about it? If America survives based on prayer, is it your prayer life going to keep her surviving? As much as I have disdain for the current administration because I don't think they were duly elected, 
I'm still commanded by the word of God to pray for them. How much praying do we do for them? And I'm not talking about that cynical Baptist crowd saying, well, I'm praying God kills them. That's not praying for them. That's you being the judge, and I'm pretty certain the Bible says I'm not to judge any man's servant. I wonder if America is to survive and revivals to break out is based on how many people we're godly witness to. Will America survive? Hmm. I wonder if America's to survive based on how much of the word of God we share. Will America survive? I wonder if America's going to survive based on real worship. How much worship do we do? I'm tired of going to meetings where all they do is worship man. I come to hear about Jesus. He changes lives. Mm. You do realize that not only do we have a constitutional right and a biblical right, you do realize you're sitting here tonight because there have been fathers of our faith who have given their lives that we could have the privilege to worship. They did not succumb to tyranny. They did not succumb to other religions. They stood based on the Bible. And friend, if it comes down to your stand for true Christianity, will the church survive? I know of churches all over the South that are closing or about to close because of a pandemic. There wasn't any soldiers came to our doors. There wasn't any shots fired. There was just idle threats and churches closed and now they're wondering why they can't get their people back. Hmm? Let me help you with something. I'm just going to help you right now. There's always a virus. But the one that shut everything down was manufactured. And the big bad wolf, he huffed and he puffed, but the virus wasn't as bad as they told us. And if that kept you out of church, what are you going to do when the real heat gets on? It is good. That's good preaching even if I did do it, Brother Donald. I don't want to meet Jesus with my head held down because I perpetrated Sodom and Gomorrah and not the things of God. Because Jesus said, either you're for me or you're against me. Who are you for today? What impact are you making? See, you can make an impact. You may not be able to do what somebody else can do, but you can do something. Hmm? All of America might rest upon your shoulders. Might rest upon my shoulders. What are we doing? What to pray. What to let folks know Jesus is coming. Because he is coming, friend. And judgment's coming. Hmm? You think it's bad now? Grocery stores and the prices of things and all that. You let God continue to take his grip off of America. See, some of you don't remember what just happened to Venezuela a couple of years ago. Hmm? Huh? Inflation got up to about 45%. It's about 8% now. Hmm? That's coming to America. Hmm? Somebody needs to pray. Somebody needs to do something for God. And friend, when God takes the church out of here, if you're not saved, what's going on right now? is a picnic compared to what's going to happen. Because the only thing constraining evil right now is the Holy Ghost of God being on this planet. But when he checks out with the church, total anarchy is going to go on in this world. Hmm? Hmm? You'll pray for the day that God will destroy your life. And then you'll die and go to hell, friend. If I'd get saved today. I'd give my life to Jesus today because, friend, he could come back today. And I wonder. I have no reservation at all saying America is going to apologize to Sodom one day. But are you and I going to apologize to America? 
God help us to do more than wear red, white, and blue. God help us to impact the red, white, and blue. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll come get a song of invitation. folks are coming let's pray father we bless you we thank you for our church thank you for our young people thank you for our young adults thank you for our middle-aged folks and our seniors lord you've been good to our church lord i'm thankful that the sun never sets on our ministry we we support missionaries all over the world but Lord, we could do more. So God, help us to do more. Help us never be satisfied with where we're at. God, help us to shine our light. Help us, Lord, to let folks know Jesus saves. God, those in our families that aren't right with God, I pray that God, our testimony would impact them. God, we'd see them get right with God. God, our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends. God, I pray we'd have an impact. Well, Lord, I pray you'd impact this invitation. God, there may be folks here this morning that aren't saved. Lord, they might not be as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah, but they have sin in their life. And Lord, we know you're angry with the wicked every day. And so, God, I pray that you'd open their eyes to their lost condition. God, I pray they'd run to an altar and get born again. God, I pray for the children of God. You'd break their hearts for righteousness. God, I pray you'd send revival. The only hope for America is revival. God, send revival to your churches. God, bless. God, give us the Caribbean. Lord, I pray we'd see all them folks saved down there, 44 million. I pray we'd see every one of them saved. Open doors. Make a way. God, you're a great God. You love them all. You want to save them all. Help us, Lord, to do our part. Now, God, bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.